So we are, we are starting. Okay. Lord Jesus, we just come this morning to worship you, to anoint you with praise and honor. We just want to lift you up on high. We want to shout your name. We want to sing of your glories. We want to raise a thousand hallelujahs because you're deserving of that and so much more. Yes, sir. We just praise, praise, praise you, Lord, and me. Pray that as we do that this morning, that you would come and dwell in our midst. And that Holy Spirit, that you would take this time and move in new ways. In your mighty and most precious name, Lord Jesus, we pray.
lift up your heads, you gates, be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates, lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is, who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. And this morning, Lord, we just welcome you, King of glory, into our midst. You are alive. Your resurrection power is alive, is here with us. You have defeated every sin. You have defeated every failing. You have defeated every mistake. You have defeated it all on the cross, Lord. And even as we have died to ourselves, Lord, this morning, Lord, we rise with you afresh and new to be new creations, new people, to be a people of hope, of joy, of love, filled with your resurrection power, Lord. We say to every dead area, come alive. We say to every dead part of ourselves, come alive. Jesus is risen. Jesus is alive. And we just declare life, truth, power into every life and into this body. In your mighty and most majestic name, Jesus, we worship you and we pray. Amen.
truly no one like you none beside you you are almighty powerful you are good god you are loving you are faithful you are strong and you are mighty to save we worship you this morning jesus and we just want to say we love you lord there is really no one like you we love you jesus amen we thank you lord this morning that we worship the one and only true living god no one like you no one to compare with you no one who is worthy of our worship lord no one who is worthy for praise and glory and honor we pray lord that from the depths of our hearts lord with all of our beings we will give you the worship that you are due this morning we will pour ourselves out lord in worship and praise and thanksgiving and adoration we exalt you this morning thank you lord jesus that you are here and thrown in this place to come holy spirit move come and have your way amen
us that we have so many reasons to rejoice, to praise you this morning. Thank you that your love surrounds us, fills us, carries us. And we just want to dive into the joy of your presence this morning. Thank you that you are alive, you are with us, and we have this amazing hope, Lord, that no matter where we are at, and no matter what season of life we are in, you are the one who sustains us. Thank you, Jesus. In your name I pray. Amen. Even as I, as you said, the whole earth is filled with your glory, I remember that, well, before that, three days earlier, the whole earth was in darkness. And the sun just stopped for three hours. I'm just reading the, the resurrection passage from 1 Corinthians 15 before the first song. So, what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. After that he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. Then from verse 12, But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is our faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God. For we have testified about God that He raised Christ from the dead. But He did not raise, but He did not raise Him if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those who also have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If we only have hope for this life in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in his own turn, Christ the first fruits. Then, when he comes, those who belong to him.
going to have a time of praise reports. The guys online can also share. But also, if you, I mean, I'm hoping people from here will share, but you need to come here. Remember, like in all things, you have to come to the mic because the mic is over here. All right? So. Can I go? Remember, what are, what are the two S's for praise reports? Short and sweet. And I'm learning from you to keep it short and sweet. It's very short and sweet. And it is SMT also. Short and sweet. Short and sweet. Short and sweet. Short and sweet. And it is SMT also. It is, my praise report is very short and sweet. It is, it is, I'm, my, short, my praise report is show and tell. You know, and I'm just going to show it to you. Can you see my arm going up? So, woo, woo, this is my, woo. this is the shortest, shortest testimony. And all thanks to God. And if you don't know, on Friday, we went to, we went to Beach Candy. After Good Friday, and it was hurting like crazy. And then we wanted to do an MRI. And we felt the mother being a ligament tear, the doctor said. Or it could have been a muscle tear. And then we shall be set out. A message for prayer. To thank you for all the prayers. And everything was closed. Now, the MRI was available, but because it was Easter, it was 6,000 rupees more. So forget 10,000, it would be 16,000. So we decided we'd do it on Saturday. And again, no slot available on Saturday. So God just made it impossible. And then we went to NM Medical. And again, my friend Alma said, Swati, just uh, hold it. Uh, and Shanti also suggested, let's just put it to work. Mm -hmm. Specialist and let him say MRI. And so we got the appointment for Tuesday. And Janti told it's one week. See if your hand can go up. It couldn't even to move. It was so goddamn painful. I can't even tell you. Tears will come up. So it's short and sweet. Show and tell. I'm going to do it one more time. Really, this is no magic spell. It can really go up. I just realized. <laughs> My proof and partnering in prayer, the chance for everything coming and telling me now we need to go to the doctor. Now we need to do, don't do this. This is Mehel in my group, Usha, Shubhada, Basant. I forget the name. And who's been really praying. And we know who prayed for me last Sunday, um, Mr. Uday, who told everybody, let's pray for Swati and Rahel and Anila, and everybody who sent me so many flowers and goodies and kept me cool from inside out. And I just believe, truly believe, from Friday to today, when I felt I might have to go in for surgery, show the doctor, it is just prayers. Really, I just can't tell you. Isn't it Shanti? Shanti knows the thing is for you is Shanti. Shanti is the only one. So thank you, everybody. Short and sweet, isn't it? Yes. Okay. I can't give Shanti a hug. She doesn't like it. She doesn't like it. Yes, <laughs> Okay, I have a praise report. I just want to really give thanks and praise to God for yesterday's, uh, being able to do like yesterday's living room session. Um, just that I wanted to do it throughout Lent and somehow just never kind of got down to it. But I was just really glad that I could do it yesterday on Holy Saturday. I want to thank God that Rahel and Jairaj were here through it all despite the heat. Um, but just really want to thank God because uh, so many people came and so many friends and family who are not Christian also were online. Uh, so just want to trust that God touched them in some way. So thank you. Thank you, Lord. And that we have so many people here as well. There's a whole table full of people in Bangalore. And so many people in Pune. So just lovely to see so many gatherings in Trivandrum. <laughs> All right. Um, I just wanted to thank God for a really lovely time with my daughter and her husband um, who are, have, are here from the U.S. and they coordinated it with my spring break last um, week. And it had been two and a half years since I had seen 
uh, my daughter. And so it was very, very special. Um, and we went from here to um, D uh, Delhi, picked up my grandson, went to Missouri, and then my son and his wife were also able to come from Delhi. So um, just an amazing, amazing time of being together, very relaxed. Um, I know some of you were praying. So um, thank you so much. Thank you, Jesus. Just want to say thank you, Jesus, for. Um, um, so I, I know that some of you know that my I lost my granddad about two weeks back, but just want to say thank you, Jesus, that he came to live here in Pune with us for in the past seven years. So we got a chance to for my children, so for four generations to live together for seven years. This is just a blessing, and that even through his last days. Uh, we could worship with him, we could sing with him, and uh, just uh, thank you that he went in his sleep, most peaceful way, and really that we as a family could be together during this time. So, yeah. thank you, Jesus, for that. Thankful that we're back at Carol's place. Yeah, I was just thinking that. Woo! Just after March 15th. 2020, yes. more than two years. You know, when Pervin shared about the about the living room yesterday, it struck me because I thought because we were we had meetings going on till Thursday. Thursday the 14th, we had morning and night. Then Friday, of course, we had Good Friday, but we had nothing on Saturday. And I thought to myself that Saturday was the last day of Lent, but we didn't have any meeting. But then it just struck me that the living room session happened and so we could as much as possible gather and be part of a time of worship. And I really thought that God uh, gave us that time to sort of end, end the lens. So we praise God for that. We thank you for your presence in this place, Lord. We thank you that we get to celebrate something so awesome as your resurrection and the hope that we have through it. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will come, you will speak to us now. Uh, let familiar words come alive. Uh, bring revelation to us, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name, Amen. So let us read. We'll read the passage is John chapter 20, verses 1 to 23. I'm going to read it out and then we'll uh, share a bit. Very early Sunday morning, before sunrise, Mary Magdalene made her way to the tomb. And when she arrived, she discovered that the stone that sealed the entrance to the tomb was moved away. So she went running as fast as she could to tell Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. She told them, They've taken the Lord's body from the tomb, and we don't know where he is. Then Peter and the other disciples jumped up and ran to the tomb to go see for themselves. They started out together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He didn't enter the tomb, but peeked in and saw only the linen cloths lying there. Then Peter came behind him and went right into the tomb. He too noticed the linen cloths lying there, but the burial cloth had, that had been on Jesus' head had been rolled up and placed separate from the other cloths. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first went in, and after one look he believed. For until then they hadn't understood the scriptures that prophesied that he was destined to rise from the dead. Puzzled, Peter and the other disciple then left and went back to their homes. Mary arrived back at the tomb, broken and sobbing. She stooped to peer inside, and through her tears she saw two angels in dazzling white robes sitting where Jesus' body had been laid, one at the head and one at the feet. Dear woman, why are you crying? They asked. Mary answered, They have taken away my Lord and I don't know where they've laid him. Then she turned around to leave and there was Jesus standing in front of her, but she didn't realize that it was him. He said to her, Dear woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Mary answered, thinking he was only the gardener. Sir, if you have taken his body somewhere else, tell me and I will go and... Mary, Jesus interrupted her. Turning to face him, she said, Rabboni, I will make for my teacher. Jesus cautioned her, Mary, don't cling to me, 
for I haven't yet ascended to God, my Father. And He's not only my Father and God, but He's now, now He's your Father and your God. Now go to my brothers and tell them what I've told you, that I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Then Mary Magdalene left to inform the disciples of her encounter with Jesus. I have seen the Lord, she told them, and she gave them his message. That evening the disciples gathered together, and because they were afraid of reprisals from the Jewish leaders, they had locked the doors. But suddenly Jesus appeared among them and said, Peace to you. Then he showed them the wounds of his hands and his side. They were overjoyed to see the Lord with their own eyes. Jesus repeated his greeting, Peace to you, and he told them, just as the Father has sent me, I am now sending you. Then, taking a deep breath, he blew on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. I send you to preach the forgiveness of sins, and people's sins will be forgiven. But if you don't proclaim the forgiveness of their sins, they will remain guilty. I just want to share a few thoughts. We preach so many sermons on Easter, but as I read this passage, this this particular passage, there are of course different resurrection passages across the Gospels. A couple of thoughts struck me. The first thing that struck me was this. You know, we've been looking at the crucifixion, obviously Good Friday, but also in the devotions, every day has been about the cross. And one thing that really struck me was the crucifixion was so public. His humiliation was completely public, out there in the open. I think yesterday or today's devotion also was about how almost everybody involved with that situation, the bystanders, the soldiers, the the religious leaders, every Tom, Dick and Harry basically in Jerusalem at that time saw Jesus' utter humiliation naked on the cross with all of that and not only on the cross he was of course paraded all through the city getting to the getting to Golgotha in the first place and then his six hours on the cross that whole the whole uh, picture of the crucifixion was completely public and by contrast something so glorious as the resurrection was so private it's very strange no i mean it's his all the people were still around. Everybody who had mocked and insulted and questioned and uh, killed him as well, uh, sentenced him, everybody was still around in Jerusalem. How wonderful if his resurrection had been just as public. And in his glorious body, Jesus went parading through the city. And even greater procession than what happened with when he came in at Palm Sunday, and he would be completely vindicated and everybody would know that he was the Messiah. Who would be able to doubt it? I mean, just on Friday evening, they would seen him publicly humiliated, all of that, all through the city, put up on the cross there. And now on the third day, there would be another procession. And it astonishes me that Jesus chose not to do that. And his resurrection was so private. Even I, I read the passage from 1 Corinthians 15 earlier. The maximum number of people ends up being 500. By the time we come to Pentecost 50 days later, it's down to 120. There's a mystery, there's a secret behind this fact that Jesus chose to keep his resurrection private even though his crucifixion was so public. One of the things we learn from the Old Testament is this, that miracles don't lead to lasting faith. The Jews were the best example of that. Nobody saw greater miracles than the Israelites coming out of Egypt and into the Promised Land. Nobody saw greater miracles than that. But they kept falling continuously. It's like every second day, they would run behind an idol or run behind somebody else. We are always told that if, if, if the miracle that happened in the Bible happened in our time, surely we would believe. You know, you have people who say, I want a Damascus experience. The Israelites had the cloud and the fire every day and night for 40 years. 
they had manna every every morning they woke up and got manna they had water coming out of the rock for 6 million people and their and their animals for 2 years while they were at mount sinai you cannot even fathom the miracles that they had but they kept running to idols they kept doing whatever they felt like okay jesus knew more than anyone how how uh, what's the word i get i use the word wishy washy i i want to give a better word how fickle men faith is and he knew that even a public resurrection appearance would not make much difference but after there was another reason i believe for why he kept it private and we'll just look at that here in this i mean i'm just going to be sharing a few thoughts and i guess i somewhere i'll come back to this thought of it being private and if i don't just remind me that i didn't give you the other reason okay so we see here the we see here the resurrection stories i'm going to focus on mary and the mary magdalene and the disciples i have not even looked at thomas i won't go there so we see mary she comes she sees the tomb empty her immediate thought is that they've shifted the body and taken his body somewhere else there is no thought of resurrection now remember that jesus has now several times told his disciples which would include mary magdalene because the women were around with them if at some point i'm sure they have heard Jesus saying i'm going to be crucified and i'm going to rise on the third day every time he shared about the crucifixion with them he told them i'm going to rise on the third day okay it seems that they absolutely did not believe it mary goes and tells them the body is not there peter and john go running and we have all this wonderful detail which tells us that john actually wrote it first that guy peeked in then i peeked in later i went there first but i didn't peek in peter went running in then i went and peeked in all these wonderful details and then we even have we even have the fact that the that the cloth had been folded and rolled up and today i heard a sermon where he said maybe god is telling us we need to fold our clothes <laughs> and even the burial cloth was folded nicely that's for all the children and encouragement for all the parents teach your children to fold their clothes that that is a new thing i learned today all right anyway so the disciples that see that heard jesus so many times saying he'll be raised from the dead they go and they see the empty tomb and then john writes after one look he believed he's talking about himself and then there is the commentary that john believed but you know the next line is that they went to, they went back puzzled Well, why were they puzzled then? If John believed, then it says that both he and Peter went back to the rest of the disciples, and they were probably in that upper room. Why were they puzzled? I'm not sure exactly what he believed. Did he just believe Mary Magdalene that the body was not there? Because they went running, right? They went running to see whether what she was saying was true. or we have or it's a very great belief that he believed but for some reason he didn't tell anybody else about it and they all went back puzzled if i'm not sure what happened alex they go to the disciples a little later but they go back it's interesting that they go back and mary stays on at good friday also anila shared that sir when the women were at the cross the men were hiding apart from john we always see the women near jesus we see them at his feet and here mary magdalene i mean they they see the tomb is empty they are curious they are puzzled they believe something and they go off back to where they are hiding and they continue hiding okay mary comes to the tomb and she just can't leave that place this is the last place that she saw jesus so she saw his body being laid there and she's unable to leave that place which is a good thing in one way just share it shows us that sense of intimacy that mary had with jesus okay anyway the story goes on that she she sees the angels by the way now if peter and john had stayed back a bit they'd have seen the angels 
but they left and went off. And she comes, she hangs around, the angels are there. By the way, there's a very interesting thing in this Bible, in the footnotes, because they, she sees two angels sitting on either end of the that slab. And it says that it seems to be the, a picture of the Ark of the Covenant. And you had the two cherubim on either side. And of course, that was the mercy seat that they were over. And of course, the mercy seat now is the empty tomb, that empty slab. Jesus is no longer there. Okay, so that's an interesting picture of the Ark of the Covenant itself. Okay. Anyway, to go back to the story. So, she's waiting for him. She's wondering where is Jesus, where is his body. She sees Jesus, thinks it's a gardener. And, may, and Jesus interrupts her and says, Mary. And that is enough. You know, I wish we knew what his expression was, what the tone of his voice was. When he said that one word, Mary, and that was enough. The moment he said his, her name, you know, she recognized him. I can't imagine the feeling, the emotion, the love that she has experienced ever since he drove out seven demons from her. She'd been around him all this time. And something in his voice, something in the expression, the emotion, she immediately knows it is him. Okay. And she says, Raboni, and he said, Do not cling to me. Actually, I've done a whole sermon on Do Not Cling to Me. I won't go into that today. But I wanted to share this. Mary Magdalene, at this point, was still in the place of the cross. She was still in the place of the cross in that sense. That Jesus is dead. The suffering, the pain, the sense of loss. She is in that place. She is not supposed to be in that place. Because He is risen. And He has to interrupt her and say, Mary, that's all gone. And in a sense, do not cling to me. Don't even cling to what you have known of me. Because everything has changed today. Everything has changed today. And she now needs a new paradigm to relate to Jesus himself. Who, is, who he is to her and what she has to be to him. Okay, he said, I am ascending to the Father. All of that he says. And then he makes a statement, now go to my brothers and tell them what you've seen. Mary would have been so happy to just stay in that garden. And we know in one of the other Gospels, she and someone else, they fall at his feet and they hold on to his feet. That's where they want to be. Jesus says, no, this is not the place for you now. He says, get up and go. And tell my brothers that I have risen. She's got to now move in the reality of the resurrection, not stay in the reality of the cross. Okay? So that's Mary. Then we move to the disciples. The disciples are gathered together. That's why I wonder what John believed, because they are still afraid. Look at the disciples. It says, because they were afraid of reprisals. If they had any inkling that Jesus had risen from the dead, they would not be afraid. But they were afraid. Okay? Now, by this time, by the way, Jesus has already met with the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. He's already spoken to them. Their hearts have burned as he shared the scripture with them. He's broken bread and their eyes have been opened. They have run back. And they told the other disciples. All that's already happened. They still don't believe. They are still afraid. They are still living in the shadow of the cross. You see? They are still living in the place of the cross. Even after two of their own people tell them that they've met Jesus, even after they've seen the empty tomb, even after John has believed something, I'm not sure exactly what, they're still in that place. 
and then Jesus appears. He shows them the wounds. They are overjoyed. Finally, they believe. Okay. What does Jesus say to them? As the Father has sent me, now I am sending you. You can't stay in this place of the cross. You have to move into the next dimension, into the reality of the resurrection, and what that means. Let me put it this way: the crucified Christ says, "Come, come to the cross." The risen Jesus says, "Go." The crucified Christ says, "Come," and we've all come. We come to the cross. We receive forgiveness. We the the veil is torn. We have access to the holy of holies. We have access to the Father's presence. Our identity, sons and daughters, we are washed clean by the blood. Do we remain in that blessing only? Do you realize the cross is so amazing, but it is so easy to remain in the blessing of the cross because the blessing of the cross is so personal. The forgiveness, forgiveness of my sins. I've been set free. You know the four Ps. That the blood cleanses me from the pollution of sin. Remember, Jesus has taken the penalty of my sin. He has broken the power of sin. What is the fourth one? He has removed the partition of sin. All of those are personal. All of those are about us. And too many Christians live in that reality. And don't step into the next phase. It's a wonderful reality to be in. Of course, that's what Jesus did for us on the cross. And but just like Mary and the disciples were in that suffering or that loss of the cross, we can remain in the blessing of the cross. The Jesus tells Mary, "Go." Jesus tells the disciples, "I am sending you." And he says the same to us. because it's so easy to remain in the blessing of the cross and he actually expands on it in the next one he says there he says he blew on them and said receive the holy spirit that word for blew on them is used only once in the new testament and that's over here and we have a clue as to what jesus means there or what the writer john means because it's also used in the in the septuagint the septuagint is the greek translation of the old testament it is used there for every for jesus growing on man in genesis chapter 2 the creative blowing and man was created jesus blows on them to bring about the new creation and then he tells them preach the forgiveness of sins if you don't proclaim it they will not be forgiven what did he mean by that if you stay here the blessing of the cross will not be for everybody else it's the same for us we can get so stuck it's a very good thing it's not the best we can get so stuck in enjoying the blessing of the cross that we do not go and tell the rest of the world about this blessing so that they too can experience it is so scary why is the world in such a bad state because of you and me don't blame god he said if you don't proclaim the forgiveness they will remain guilty if you don't tell them they will remain in their state the same state that we were in and we're so happy not to be in that state because we know jesus we know what he did on the cross for us so he would tell us like he told mary magdalene go He would he would tell the disciples like tell us like he told the disciples I am sending you as my father sent me Jesus was sent from heaven to earth we are only being sent from earth to earth you know I think that the lockdown and the pandemic and what happened to the church is a wonderful example of this we just got stuck in the blessing of online church. In the blessing of getting up five minutes before the service, or sometimes five minutes after the service time. In coming to church in our pajamas with the Zoom thing off. In not having to travel, I mean, not having to travel to Carol's house and having to set up everything, or traveling to Hawaii. 
<laughs> and so many other things. We just got, you know, it was like there was a blessing to it as well. There was a comfort to it. Shanti was always confessing. I don't feel like getting out now. I'm so happy to be here. You know, there was a comfort to it. And there's a great comfort in just enjoying the blessings of the curse. You know, we take that we take that difficult step of saying yes to Jesus. Saying we're sinners, we need you. We do all of that. And we come to this place of incredible blessing. And then we stay there. And Jesus said, Go. I truly believe that from May, from June onward, even highway is going to look different. He is telling us to go. He is telling us that I am sending you out. It's a word that keeps on coming to us whenever we get causalized, ossified, in a nice place, not in a bad place. We get stuck in a nice place. And it's a better place than we were before. We move forward. But he wants us to go still further. And that always involves stepping out, taking risks, going out to those who don't know him. The freedom of the cross. We live in the freedom of the cross. God has set us free. We've got to live in the victory of the tomb. We've got to live in that victory. We have to operate in that victory. Otherwise, as Jesus says, they will remain guilty. And all that comes with it, they will remain oppressed. They will remain bound in their sins. Unless we go out, unless we are ready to, to step out of the comfort of the cross in a sense. With all of the blessing of the cross, we will go to move out. I remember, come back to, why was the resurrection so private? Because Jesus did his job. His job was not to proclaim the resurrection. That's our job. His job was not to proclaim the resurrection. His job was to come and get crucified. That was his job. He did his job. He told a few people about the resurrection. You know, what was the what was the message of the apostles? Just look in the New Testament, look in the book of Acts. What did they preach? They preached the resurrection. Again, I was hearing this preacher and I've, I've said this before also. He was saying that, he's saying that, he's saying, he's saying our central belief is not even in the Bible. It's in, it's in the central message of the Bible, which is that Jesus rose from the dead. And that's what the disciples preached. Their main statement was this, Jesus rose from the dead. Of course, the implication therefore is that he died on the cross and what the cross means. When they chose the twelfth apostle, because in, in the place of Judas, what was the criteria? Someone who has been with us and who is a witness to the resurrection. They couldn't even be witness to the cross. Eleven of them were not even there. They were witnesses to the resurrection. We have to live in the reality of the resurrection. We have to live in the victory that the, resur that the resurrection exemplifies, emphasizes of, is the epitome of. And that's what we're being called to. I think it's wonderful, wonderful that we enjoy all the blessings of the cross. Jesus says, go. Jesus says, I'm sending you. Today I want to look at both those words and I want to give invitation even to those who are online. You know, the crucified Christ says, come. 
and if you haven't come to Jesus, just do it in the quietness of your heart. Come to the, I mean, it's so wonderful to come to Jesus because most of us are willing, are just sitting over there. They're so happy to be there because it's so wonderful to come to Jesus and all that he gives us through the cross. And so if you haven't done it, just do it today. We'll have a time of quiet. It's between you and God. Just to say, yes, Jesus, I come to you. I want the blessings of the cross. The forgiveness of my sins. The partition between me and the Father to be broken. That identity as a son and a, and a daughter of the living God. But there's another word today, you know, the risen Jesus says, go. And if you've already come to Jesus, today let's make that commitment. Yes, Jesus, I will go. What did he do for the disciples before he told them to go? He breathed on them. He blew on them. He made them a new creation. We already live in the age of the Spirit ever since Pentecost. But I believe that as you say, you know, it's, it's both ways. Anybody who says, yes, Jesus, I come to you, the Holy Spirit will come and fill you with the reality of the Father's love. And any of us who say today, yes, Jesus, I'm willing to go, the Holy Spirit will blow on us and give us the power to do that work. So we'll just be silent for a minute or two. Let's make our own confessions. Let's make our own connection with Jesus whether it is to come to Him or to be willing to go. And Holy Spirit, I pray this morning is for anyone who has come to you today for the first time or maybe even come back to you. You say, come Holy Spirit and fill afresh and pour the Father's love into each one the assurance of salvation, the assurance of identity as sons and daughters, the assurance of the forgiveness of sins, and the assurance of a new life in Jesus. I pray for each one of us, Lord, today who has said yes to the risen Jesus, that we will go. Say, Holy Spirit, fill us with that power from on high. Fill us with the power to be your witnesses. Fill us with boldness. Fill us with the willingness to take risks, to look foolish, to be abandoned to your kingdom purposes. Give us a burden for the lost around us. Send us out in your power, we pray, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus, we thank you for every reminder through the last few days, through this season of Lent, of all that you have done for us, Lord, even in that familiar event of dying on the cross. I just want to thank you for everything that you did for me, all that you became for me, every humiliation, every suffering, every rejection and abandonment. I might be standing here today, saved, set free, with a hope for eternity, Lord. And today as we break this bread together and we drink of this cup as your children, as your people, we celebrate your death, we celebrate your resurrection and all that you have released into our lives because of your suffering. It is such a wonderful, mm. super awesome God and today we just celebrate you, we thank you, we love you. And it's such an honor for us, Lord, to be able to break of this bread and drink of this cup and remember what you have done for each one of us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And so let's just break bread and celebrate all that Jesus has done for us. And let's drink of this cup and celebrate his great goodness to us.
just a couple of announcements midweek meetings we are having no meetings this week at all actually no meetings this month no midweek meetings we are having uh, the last weekend meeting this weekend 24th 23rd and 24th yeah the last live before you die and alpha on sunday right the last alpha session so saturday sunday meetings are still there but the midweek meetings are not there as we head into camp uh, next sunday now when i saw i was nicely set up i was so tempted but i really feel god wants us to do one service in our house i don't know how that will happen a tiny place but next sunday service is in kolaba at our place the following sunday there is no service because there are camp hopefully most of you will be at camp and we'll stream it of course I don't know who will be there to just to watch for the moment. Everybody is going to be at camp, and then in May we'll again start meeting physically. Give you the details later, but we're pretty certain to meet here as well. Maybe alternate or maybe every week. We're not really sure as yet how that will work out. Yeah, but so just remember next week, next Sunday that in Kolaba, the following Sunday that camp, and also remind about camp if you still want to come. If you haven't given your name, go ahead and talk to Neil about it. Not too many new people. When I just looks at me like, because the numbers are, we haven't put any cap on the numbers.
as they were. The morning sun was dead. The Savior of the world was fallen. His body on the cross, His blood poured out for us. The weight of every curse upon Him.
hearts, Lord. Holy Spirit, that you will break out in our midst, that you will break out in our families, in our homes, break out through our lives, Lord, in our cities and our nation. Send your mighty revival. We want to see your kingdom come. We say, come, Lord, let heaven invade earth in a fresh outpouring. right now, Holy Spirit will break down the walls, Lord, even, even those in our hearts that are keeping you from taking complete control. We will break down walls, Lord, among us. And join us in such a spirit of unity. Send us out, Lord, as an army, equipped and trained ready to lay down our lives to see your kingdom come. Spirit, break out, we pray. Come fill us afresh. Send us out to be your work. Lord GFP, thank you so much for this morning. Thank you for a fresh beginning, Lord, over this weekend. Thank you for the new and amazing thing that you have in store for us. That you, and amazing thing that you want to do through us. We give thank you in advance and give you all praise, honor, and glory for who you are, for what you've done, the cross, the resurrection, and this life in your spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. I want to wish happy Easter to each one of you, each one online, and thank you so much for coming here, being part of the service. Have a wonderful week ahead. Thank you so much, Karen. So good to be back. Be back. Okay, we have some birthdays. Sorry, as usual, I forget. Father God, we just thank you so much, Lord. It just uh, seems like yesterday in so many ways um, that we were here and we were able to wish Usha uh, a happy birthday. And Lord, in some ways, it just feels like ages, but... It just feels so good to be able to be with Usha today, to be able to wish her a wonderful year ahead, um, to be able to open that door in her life, Lord, uh, through our prayers for the richness and the abundance of, of your blessing to be poured into her. Father, we just ask that in this coming year, Usha will, will experience you in, in a new and wonderful way. Um, that she will grow in you in whatever way she needs to grow. That she will understand the width and the depth and the breadth of the, of the love that you have for her. And she will be envisioned with the plans that you have for her. I just want to speak a blessing on her today, Lord, and just open that door for your work in her life just want to say that we love her, we cherish her, we're so grateful for her, and we just want to pour out our love on her and your love on her today. We thank you for this opportunity. We bless you, Jesus, and we pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit, come fill Usha fresh right now. Fill it to overflowing, Lord. Immerse her from head to toe in your power. And Usha, I just felt this word that came. God says, you're not done yet. There's a new adventure that he is equipping you for. That he's fitting you with like a custom-made armor for in this year ahead. People are fresh equipping for that, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. Father, I just want to thank you for the blessing of Asha, Lord, just for um, just the joy she brings, the warmth she brings. Thank you for the super tight hugs that she gives and just um, really her smile and just praying, Lord, that this new year will be a year of knowing you, 
of seeing you as her friend, uh, as someone she can share everything with. Just come, Holy Spirit, and just fill her with a spirit of joy and a spirit of peace. In Jesus' name, Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Father, I pray for Usha. I just want to thank you for the quiet but just beautiful presence that she is in any room. Just thank you for her innocence. Thank you for her kindness, Lord. And just praying that this year will be a year where she understands not only herself, but who she is in you, Lord. Help her to embrace her identity as a daughter of the most holy God. And I help her to always see how precious she is. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will fill these two beautiful girls afresh as they begin this new year. You want to speak uh, these words that were true for Jesus over their lives. It says in Luke chapter 2, verse 52, As Jesus grew, so did his wisdom and maturity. The favor of men increased upon his life, but he was greatly loved by God. But we release a blessing upon Usha and Asha. Wisdom and maturity, the favor of men, and the, they will experience the great love of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I love those years, money years. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll spotlight Puna. Yes, our birthday girl. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, I didn't even know you're talking about me. <laughs> Lord Jesus, we just want to thank you so very much for Nishita, Lord, and this last year of her life, Lord, in which you have grown her, stretched her, matured her, strengthened her, freed her, released her into the fullness, Lord, of all that you are calling her into. And in this year ahead, Lord Jesus, we just pray that you would release a fresh anointing a mantle of boldness and power and uh, just a fresh uh, boost of your energy, of your life, of your joy, of your love, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would just give her a, a heart to share your love, to share your word with everyone around her, Lord God, and that uh, you would fill her to overflowing, that she would just bubble over into every sphere and into every place in which you have called her, Lord Jesus. We thank you and we praise you in, in your name, I pray. Amen. Amen. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you be poured out afresh upon Nishita. And I just see in your spirit, Nishita, a little quivering, and I, I speak the words of Jesus, and he says, Be still. And that which is shaky is being solidified and strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, to echo what Renel prayed, that the spirit of boldness is being released. For his kingdom purposes. Come, Holy Spirit, and seal the work that you're doing in the Shita right now and may it be manifested in this year ahead. In Jesus' name, Amen.